In this video, we're going to walk through how to use Git and what it looks like on an actual project. Teach Me channel, oh, no, stop it. My name is Amy Dutton. Um, I'm a web designer. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? Uh, I'm a web designer and developer. I've worked on hundreds of websites. Most of them you probably haven't heard of, but a few of them you probably have. I realize the web is a different place than when I started 20 years ago. A lot of it probably seems like black magic. It's hard to know where to go or who to trust. And I wanna change that and help you. So if that's something that you're interested in, hit the subscribe button below or go to selfteach.me and subscribe to my email newsletter. So today we're looking at Git. If you're not even sure what that is or how to get it installed on your computer, check out my other video. I'll post a link in the card. I don't even know what side the card is gonna be on. <laughs> Let's set up an actual project and walk through step by step. I'm going to create a new folder on my computer called Learning Git. This will be our project folder. And let's open this up within VS Code. Okay, I'm going to create a new file called jokes.txt. And this is just gonna be a plain text document that we can add some jokes to. So a journalist asked a programmer, what makes bad code? No comment. <laughs> I'm gonna give that a save. Let's give this project a repo. Hold up. What is a repo? A repo is short for repository. It contains all of your project files and all the information about its history. To initialize a repository, I'm going to go to my terminal. So I like to use a program called Hyper. You can download it for free online. First, we're gonna need to navigate to our directory. If that's scary to you, don't worry. You can type CD for change directory and then pull up your finder and just drag and drop your folder directly onto the window. And if you hit enter, magic. So to initialize, we're going to type git init, which is just short for initialize. So it says that it's initialized our empty repository. Perfect, done and done. Still in the terminal, let's type ls-la. If the terminal makes you a little queasy, don't worry, we're gonna talk through everything. So ls means to list everything in the current directory. And then usually when you see a dash like this, it's called a flag. All that means is that you're providing additional parameters for how you want the information to be displayed or handled. So in our case, this L means long format and will show all the permissions. And this A means to show hidden files. So when we hit return, this is what we see. You can see here we have .get. So this is actually a folder and it's hidden because it starts with a period. Let's open up our finder and we'll open that folder and you'll see there's just the jokes.txt. We don't see that .get file. Like I said, the dot makes it hidden. So hidden files are not shown by default within Finder. This .git folder is where all of our repo information is. If you delete that folder from your project, then you remove Git from your project. One thing I do want to point out is even though we've initialized Git within our project folder, it's actually an empty repo. We haven't committed anything. Just because jokes.txt is inside that folder doesn't mean that it's part of our repo. So let's add it. But first, before we get too much further, let's talk about workflow. You can think of your computer like this. You have a working directory, and this is where you do all the work, creating, editing, deleting, and organizing files. And actually, with jokes.txt, that's where we've been, in our working directory. Once we get to a point where we're ready to save, we move this file into a staging or a prep area so that Git knows this file is coming. As we're prepping this file to be committed, we include a brief message that says what changes were made. Then, when these files are committed, they're part of our local repository. This is where Git permanently stores our changes as different versions of the project. In the last step, we push those changes to our remote repository. This is where our files and all our changes live online, usually with a service like GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab. Seems straightforward enough, right? Now let's talk through what this actually looks like in the command line. Remember, we've already initialized our project, so I'm just going to type git status. Uh, as you might have guessed, this command tells the current status of our working directory. So it says no commits yet, and here is an untracked file, jokes.txt. Yeah, don't worry, untracked just means that we haven't committed or tracked any changes to this file yet. It's in our working directory, but it hasn't been committed to our repo. Let's prep this file so that we can commit it. Let's add it to the staging area. 
I'm gonna type get add and then we type in the file name. So jokes.txt. As a quick aside, if you have a bunch of files that need to be committed, instead of typing out each file name individually, you can type git add period and that period means to add everything. Within the terminal, if you were to type git status again, you'll see that this file has been staged to be committed. Perfect, now we just need to commit our changes and write a brief message explaining what we did and why. Within the terminal, type git commit, and then we're gonna use this dash M, so a flag saying we wanna pass a message, and within quotes, we'll say what our message is, like that. There are a few rules when you're writing commit messages. The message must be within quotes, it must be in present tense, and it must be less than 50 characters. As a quick PSA, updates is not a good commit message. Of course you're making updates, you're not helping anybody. When you're writing a commit message, you wanna say what you did and why. Sometimes it's easy to get these commit messages under 50 characters, other times it's more challenging. If you need to write more, there are conventions for that. Surprise. <laughs> then the terminal type git commit and you'll leave off that dash m flag. This will open a text editor called vim within your terminal. At first, this might seem a little overwhelming, but have no fear, we won't be here long and there are only a few things that you need to know. To add the text, we're gonna type I, and you'll notice down here I'm in insert mode. When writing your message, there are two sections, a header and a description. The first line is the header, and this is your 50 character title. Then you skip a line and add a description. And technically your description can be as long or as short as you want it to be. The main thing that you wanna keep in mind when writing commit messages is that if someone were to come behind you, they'd be able to tell what you did and why. This is a little strange for us since this is just a text file, but bear with me. So our title can be added a joke, uh, added because it was funny. Once you've written your message in Vim, hit the escape key and you'll notice I'm no longer in insert mode. I'm gonna type colon and you'll see I'm down here at the bottom and I'm gonna type W, Q. The W means save and the Q means quit. I'm gonna hit enter and you'll notice I'm back where I started. Now within the terminal we can check what we just saved and committed. So I'm gonna type git show and you'll notice here's the commit that I made, added a joke, added because it was funny, tells me that I made a change to jokes.txt. When you want to leave this view, type colon Q and it quits. Okay, let's open up our jokes.txt and add a new joke. If having a coffee in the morning doesn't wake you up, try deleting a table in a production database instead. <laughs> Give that a save. Now let's go back to our terminal and let's type get status. We can see here that we've modified jokes.txt. Then if we want to see exactly what changes are made, type get diff file name. So jokes.txt. This shows you in green the joke that I added. To exit out of this view, I'm gonna type colon Q. Let's use the exact same process as before to commit these changes to our repository. So I'm going to type git add jokes.txt, git commit, I'm just going to use the shorthand. So added another joke. And then if you wanna see the history of the changes that you've made to your repository, you can type git log. Here you can see I've made two commits. I added a joke and then I added another joke. Awesome, now the last step is to get our repository online. Let's set up a GitHub account and put our code there. It's very easy to set up a GitHub account. Just head over to github.com. The sign up form is right on their homepage. This is pretty obvious, but fill out the form. Prove you're not a robot. and pick a plan. GitHub will let you have an unlimited number of public repositories, but if you wanna create a private repo, you'll need a paid account. For now, I'm just gonna set up the free 90 free plan. Answer some questions. Then the last step is to confirm your email address. After I confirm my email address, it assumed I would immediately want to create a repository. Convenient, because I do. 
The first step that you'll see is that Git asks for a repository name. I'm going to name our repository learning-git, but you can call it whatever you want. The description field is optional, but I usually like to fill this in. We'll select public for this project, but usually if I'm working on a client project, I'll select private. The next section says initialize this repository with a readme. All this means is that you want GitHub to create a readme file for you and automatically add it to your repository. I usually leave this unchecked because I think it's easier to create this file myself within my project, but don't worry, we'll come back to this. Now click the create repository button at the bottom. If everything went through successfully like it should, you should be redirected to the repository page. This page is really helpful when you're first learning Git because it tells you what commands you'll need to run in the command line. There are a few different scenarios. If you know what you're doing and you just want the address, you can grab this here up top. If you're trying to create a brand spanking new repository from the command line, this will help you. Or if you're trying to push an existing repository, hey, that's us. Okay, so let's copy those lines and paste them within our terminal. Okay, so we're not blindly copying and pasting these lines of code. Let me explain what each of them did. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. This first line here says that you wanna add a remote connection like GitHub or Bitbucket to your repository. Usually the remote is called origin. I know that sounds a little weird. Usually I'll change this to be GitHub so that I know explicitly where my code is going. And plus it's easier for me to keep it straight in my head. This first line here, you only have to run once and then it's set up for the lifetime of your project. This next line actually pushes your code to GitHub. If you ended up changing origin to GitHub, then in the second line you'll want to say GitHub here too. Master is just the main branch on GitHub. Okay, when I ran this line, you'll see that it asks for a passphrase for my keys. I'll cover this in a future video, but yours will probably ask for your GitHub username and password. Just a slight difference, no big. Okay, sweet. Now all your files are online. So if I give that a refresh, you'll see there's my jokes.txt. So if something were to happen to your computer, you would have a backup of your project on GitHub. Okay, I promise you'd come back and talk about the README file. A README is a text or markdown file that sits in the root of your project. All a README does is it introduces your project and explains, explains it, gives someone onboarding information. But generally, it will talk through the tech on your project, how to get it up and running on your computer, and any general domain knowledge information someone might need to know to work on. In general, it's always good to create this file. So you think you'll remember the house rules for this project, but trust me, six months or a year from now, you won't. Be kind, you will forget, you will forget. You will fire. The cool thing is GitHub will automatically display the contents of your README directly on that homepage right under your file list. Let's look at the README for a project I'm working on to give you an idea of the types of things to include. Don't worry about the specifics, just look at the types of content. So this is the selfteach.me site repo. It's a Gatsby site, so this README is actually a modified version of the boilerplate README that Gatsby creates. Here at the top, you'll see a section of the tech that you need on your computer in order to run this project. Project. So node and then the Gatsby command line tool. Next up is this quick start section. This explains how to update the project as quickly as possible and where to go within the browser to view the project. The what's inside section tells you the folder structure for the project. I know the project is constantly changing, so the point of this section is not to outline every single file within your project, but to give you a thousand foot level view of the directory structure. Think about it this way. If your project needed to be handed off to somebody, what knowledge transfer would need to happen? If I keep scrolling down, I have information about how to deploy the site. In this case, the project is being hosted with Netlify, so anytime a change is pushed to the master branch, the site is automatically deployed. Pretty cool. As a quick PSA, never put your username or password information within your README. Remember that Git tracks all of your file history. So even if you add it with the intention of going back and deleting it later, someone could still go back in time and get those credentials. Better just to leave it out all together. The next two sections include a few command lines that you can run within the terminal for this project, how to clean and build. And then the last section is some domain knowledge. For this project, all the forms are being processed through Netlify's form feature. So I want to make sure that was documented document it somewhere. Remember, be kind to your future self. Okay, so within our practice project, let's create a README. So I'm going, within the root, I'm going to create a README, and usually this is all caps, and I'm going to make it markdown, so .md. Uh, since this is just a text file, we don't have too much to add. We'll keep it short. A few 
programming and code jokes. Let's give this a save and we're gonna go through the same process as before to commit our code and push it to GitHub. So I'm gonna open up Hyper and I'm going to type git add readme git commit added a readme and git push. Now let's jump over to GitHub and you can see that it automatically displays the contents of our readme below our file listing. Before we call it quits, I just wanted to show you what this process looks like through a GUI. GUI means graphical user interface. Went through some different apps in my what is a git video. <laughs> my favorite app is Tower, so I'll be using that, but I imagine whatever app you end up using, it'll be a similar process. Okay, so let's pull up Tower, and I'm going to come down here to the bottom, and I'm going to click Add Repository. You can see if you don't have a new one, if you haven't typed that git init, you can do that within Terminal, but in our case, we already have the repository created, so I'm just going to click on that Add Repository option. I'm gonna navigate to the folder and click Add repository. Now I'm gonna double click on the project to open it. I spend a majority of my time in this working copy section because that lists out all the files that I'm currently working on. Let's make a change to our jokes.txt file so that we'll have something to commit. How many programmers does it take to screw in a light bulb? None, it's a hardware problem. <laughs> Give that a save. And then if you jump back over to Tower, you'll see that the file is now listed as something that's changed. If I click on that file, I can see exactly what change was made. This is the same thing as running git diff jokes.txt. I'm going to click on the checkbox next to the file to stage it. This is the same as typing git add. And now I'm gonna type in a brief commit message. Added yet another joke. I'm gonna click the commit button, and then in the sidebar here, you can see that I have one commit that was made that has not been pushed yet. So if I click on this push button, you'll see that it's going to origin slash master, so the master branch on GitHub. I'm gonna click push head, and off it goes. Tower has my GitHub information stored, so it doesn't ask for my username, password, or keys like the command line does. Well, actually, if you love the terminal, there's a way that you can cache your credentials. I'll include a link in the description below. <laughs> you now know how to add Git to any project, commit those files, and push them up to GitHub. This project is posted on GitHub, linked also in the description. Feel free to download it, use it, modify it, whatever. Although there's not much to this repo, <laughs> just a few jokes. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button below, hit the bell icon if you wanna receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding.